Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this week's Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the Ryzen 2800X. A number of you have actually emailed and messaged me concerning this processor, which is alleged to be a 10 core CPU made by, of course, AMD. And we can see a screenshot, well, actually, a photo of Cinebench where the processor is claiming to have 10 cores and 20 threads and has been shared by the website El Chupaz Informatico. So, is this processor real? Are we going to be seeing AMD counter Intel with a 10 core processor? Well, no. <laughs> so, let's look at the screenshot. So first of all, the performance is looking pretty darn good. It's like way over 2,000 points, 2,100 points. I'm not going to go into exacts because, well, it's just not real. So first of all, you'll notice it says Ryzen R7 2800X. That's just not how AMD actually number their processors. It is indeed, let's say the 2700X is Ryzen 7 2700X, not Ryzen R7 2700X. So that right there is a pretty big clue that this is fake. The second clue that it's fake is it's made by a cell phone. Someone has gone in and gone doink, and it makes it considerably easier to fake something. The reason behind that is very simple, because of its, because it's a cell phone photo for a start, it makes it a lot easier to kind of overlook flaws in the images for one. And let's go through some other issues. You'll also notice that it actually calls itself a 10 core processor. And that's kind of weird because typically what you would see is it would be like 10 slash 20. So in other words, AMD have allegedly switched in the middle of a processor generation, Ryzen 2, from a numbered system to a lettered system when it comes to describing the core count of the CPU. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's not genuinely going to happen. The other problem, although it's a smaller issue, is that for them to do this, they would actually need to add in an entire new CCX. Now, you can argue that they could do this um, because each CCX, of course, contains four cores and they could theoretically do this and it would provide them some margin of error for bin chips. So let's say a couple of cores fail on a particular CCX, then they can bin that down rather than having a 12 core 24 thread processor. But would the current process be able to handle that in terms of the heat with the die area? Would motherboards be able to provide that amount of amperage, especially the, uh, let's say the older ones like the B350, some of the, the cheaper boards? which obviously had lower quality VRMs and all the other bits and bobs, so obviously the TDP would go through the roof as well. Uh, it's not necessarily the cooler would have an issue uh, in terms of like, yeah, they could put in a better cooler for the processor. It's more the fact that it just would be weird in terms of the power consumption, would the diary even fit it, and just, yeah. And of course, you've got the issues of like whether the motherboards would even support it. That's another really big clue. Now, the 2800X may come to exist. AMD in the past have said, yeah, we might release the 2800X, but the keyword is might. And if they do release the 2800X, it's almost certainly not going to have additional cores. It's almost certainly going to have something like a higher clock speed. They might just release a higher clock speed. Maybe it might be a better quality bin chip, whatever they end up doing. And you might get to 300 megahertz. And of course that would mean that the 2700X would go down slightly in price. The 2800X might arrive at the same price as the current 2700X or maybe a smidgen more. And there you go. So my personal opinion, and this is almost certainly fake. Uh, and yeah, we have reviewed the 2700X. It's a really capable processor. You can find a link to that along with a motherboard review as well in the video description if you so desire. But while that is fake, there are some new processor launches from AMD which are not fake. We see the release of the 2700E, the 2600E, the 2500 and the 2300X. And these particular processors are quite weird actually in the way that AMD are introducing them. So the 2500 and the 2300X are a little different from their predecessors. Rather than having two CCXs 
uh, which have two cores disabled per CCX, which obviously introduces intercore latency. AMD have gone a slightly different route. What they've done instead is have a single CCX enabled on the chip. So in the case of the 2500X, then we have four cores, eight threads. And in the case of the 2300X, we have just four threads available. So what is the key difference? Well, we're looking at around a 10% improvement from the previous generation. It might be a little bit better than that. And on top of that, we also have, uh, that is 10% IPC, and we also have Im uh, improved memory support as well. So AMD are claiming 2933 megahertz support for RAM, which is obviously really important for Ryzen CPUs. Furthermore, you'll hear mention, that I, well, I just said it, of the 2600 and the 2700Es. So what are the E's? They're energy efficient. They require less power. As in, they have a lower TDP. It's just 45 watts. There's still eight cores, 16 threads, or six cores, 12 threads, but they do have a lower uh, clock speed. So in the case of the E's, we're looking at just 2800 megahertz for the base frequency compared to 3700, and the turbo frequency is just at 4000 megahertz compared to 4300, that is of the X. And if we go for the 2600E, it's 3100 compared to 3600, and 4000 compared to 4200. This obviously would be really nice for small form factor builds. Rather strangely though, these CPUs will not be available at retail. The 2300, the 2500, for example, will only be available through OEMs. So companies like Acer, for example, will be selling them through desktops. It's a bit of a shame. I do understand that they have products available like the 2400G, which kind of does cannibalize some of the, uh, the sales, but they could release a CPU only, which would be a little bit cheaper. And for people who don't want to use integrated graphics, perhaps they're on a budget, it would be a nice alternative CPU. And let's face it, as a consumer, more choice is always a good thing. So one of the stories that's been doing the rounds of late is that Intel's 14nm capacity has been stretched to the breaking point. In fact, you can actually see that certain CPUs have actually risen in price slightly because Intel are simply not able to keep up with demand. They have too many products which require the usage of the 14nm manufacturing facility. So what do they do? Well, obviously in the longer term future, they can start shifting products to different uh, manufacturing processes but, well, that doesn't help them now. So, of course, they have sought out a third party, and whom else? Well, other than TSMC. So some 14 nm chips will be produced by TSMC, and this report has popped up from DigiTimes. And according to a ta Taiwanese industry source uh, who are speaking DigiTimes, Intel have seen its overall 14 nm chip supply fall short of demand by up to 50%. It's believed that with TSMC's help, Intel will start to get on top of shortages by the end of 2018. So why is it that Intel have actually hit these manufacturing limitations? Well, it's a combination of different things. For one, they've put out so many different products that are on 14 nm and they have not increased manufacturing capability and capacity really, because of course they expect it to be on a 10 nm by now. Now obviously to Intel, in the long term future, this is not necessarily a big deal, but obviously in the short term it is a big deal. And because the prices are rising against a very competitive threat right now, AMD, it's making things rather interesting for the chip giant. And finally, one other small piece of news for today, uh, Nvidia are allegedly holding back reviews of the RTX 20 series until the 19th rather than the 17th. And the reason behind that is because of review samples are not yet currently in a lot of reviewers' hands. And this is also with the driver as well. Nvidia are still tweaking the driver. Now I can confirm through my discussion with a couple of AIBs that yeah, um, they've only just started to get their products in to start seeding. In fact, uh, NDOs have only just started to lift between uh, reviewers and AIBs. In fact, now we know what cards that we're going to be getting. Uh, we're going to be getting a 2080. That's a vanilla card. And uh, we also do have an RTX 2080 Ti as well that we're procuring. So if you do want those reviews, do stick with us here at RGT, because of course you will have all the information. We're going to be comparing it with the previous generation cards. We're going to be looking at overclocking and so, so, so much more, as well as, well, let's just say quite a few tests. Um, 
I think that's just about it. Oh, uh, one last thing. I am heading towards the airport later today. I will still be producing video content while I'm in the United States. I have a couple of really cool interviews coming up. I've actually just had one reconfirm that they will be available for, to attend. And that's actually a really cool interview. I think a lot of you will be uh, really liking that one. And there's another one that I'm trying to organize as well with the Kronos Group, which is a separate interview. So it's going to be really awesome. Um, so yeah. Uh, content will be a little out of whack over the next day or two. It's, we'll, I still will be producing it, but uh, we might also be producing a couple of pieces which do not have the camera involved. So I apologize about that. It just depends on what goes on when I get to the States and how long it takes me to get the lighting set and how long it takes me to not look like I've died because of the plane flight and jet lag. But other than that, Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you have, click the, you know, that button. If not, you can click that button. And you can also subscribe and click the notification and, well, you know, the normal stuff. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.